wonderful stage presence and a gifted eloquence, PP has presented internationally and is highly sought after, sought after by leading media friends. Please join me in welcoming our students. See, I share with you, ladies and gentlemen, this is what a corporate mission statement looks like in the African bush. Now, I know that some of you folks have written corporate mission statements. And on page 300 and something, you will find out what you actually do for a living. But can you imagine waking up to this clarity? Hunt or be hunted. Sign God, have a good day. <laughs> Doesn't get any simpler. But you see, it's an entire total result-centric thinking. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I share with you like this. We speak about leadership, and we do so, so often, and with such regularity and with such consistency. <coughs> we speak about it in our boardrooms, in our strategic planning teams, with our downstream channel distribution teams, with our people, with our staff. But you know, so often what we really mean is findership. You see, leadership deals in the realm of have. Findership or what people do when they seek what they need in order to make it happen. How do you know the difference? I'll tell you how you know the difference. See, the people that walk into your boardrooms, into your meetings, into your strategic planning, your sales meetings, and they say, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we're looking to do, and here's what we need in order to make that happen. These are finders. They are not leaders. The people that walk into your boardrooms and say, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we are looking to go. And here's what we have with which to do it. That is a leader. Finders, a dime a dozen. I tell you this, if you are looking for leaders, by the way, you have come to the right place. You have come to the right place. You take a school like the Emory Guzera School of Business that nurtures and nourishes this notion of leadership. Here, deal with what is right under your nose. You are your asset. Take it to the market, launch it. You've, found, you've come to the right place. Leadership, not findership. Deposited that check that was my founding capital for Kiwi International. By the way, I had to go buy a car. So you know, on the way back from the airport, I saw a sign that said United Methodist Church of Pittsburgh. Donate your car or your boat. So like a good Jewish boy, I went right down the road to the United Methodist Church. As soon as I finished making out my deposit at the bank, I knock on the door, Father McCormick, most magnificent gentleman, comes out and says, son, how might I help you? I said, you don't mind if John's have a car for me. So he actually said he does. He takes me to the back. He shows me a Mazda 626 with 112,000 miles on the, cl on the clock. 112,000 miles on the clock with a Mazda 626 in 1987. I said, fantastic. How much for the car? He says, $400. Now, $400 would deplenish my founding capital by 50%. But I have another problem. I'm Jewish. I cannot pay retail for anything. <laughs> Nothing. It's not in my DNA. You guys know that. You have a whole team strategically designed. How do you get a Jew to buy retail? You cannot. <laughs> I said to Father McCormick, $200. $250, we cut a deal, my soul, my first transaction, I was sold. By the way, it had no gearbox and I needed an engine, but other than that, it was good. <laughs> I drove that thing 287,000 miles. I returned it in Trenton, Pennsylvania to, to a junkyard there. But do you understand what I'm trying to do here? The diamond business is about trust. It's about integrity. It's about performance history. It's about who are you? Like every single other business on earth. Except we used to think that was reserved for the jewelry industry. We have now learned that if we intend to go forward, it's not. I come to this country, I had a fabulous discovery. Somehow, the diamond and the jewelry industry had managed to exist without me for about 150 years. 
was a multi-billion dollar industry. And I could not get in with a toothpick. See, but this Ingwe came to motivate and propel me through some of the most difficult times. I want to share with you the following. They say in Zulu, a mindle Ingwe, the witch doctor will always wear leopard because they say a mindle Ingwe, let the strength of the leopard be with you. So let's take a look at this leopard for a brief moment. I'm talking about one of the most finessed closers on earth. 76% close rate, ladies and gentlemen. I'll translate that into our language. Three out of four client prospects, leadership initiatives that it engages, it closes. Lion, those huge corporate Fortune 500s with massive resource and infrastructure, incredible infrastructural resource, close something between 52 and 58% of all attempted client contacts. Here is a solo, solitary hunter that does so at a 76% close rate. How does this happen? Let me introduce you to this leopard. That knowing who and what you are will also allow you to distinguish what business is doable, what business is not. <laughs> is that a client opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, or what? <laughs> this is a 12 to 13 month old female ele elephant this is a six-month-old male cub. He examines this. He says, you know, if I close this client, I don't have to hunt for the next three years. <laughs> but I ask you this. How will he retain that client? How will he keep it viable and fresh and economically intact? He won't. How will he prevent competitor predators from stealing it? He won't. It's a good idea, but it's actually not doable. Because when you are viscerally in touch with your tooling, with your apparatus, with who you are, you very clearly have a notion of what you can do and what you cannot do. We tell our kids, the world's your oyster. Then we tell them, don't put a square pig in a round hole. Well, which one is it, Dad? Things are specific. They are particular. Know who you are. It will dramatically increase your closure. It will also keep you alive, ladies and gentlemen. Here is a $2,500 award-winning picture taken by John Body, a good friend of mine. He came in the, right in the Shawani Valley. He comes across this male leopard hunting a huge male impala. Under any other circumstances, this is an easy client close. It's a no-brainer. It's like, like Goodyear selling tires to General Motors. But he was hunting in the wrong marketplace. He thought he was a lion. He needs to be on the other side of that grass, Lelenic grass. Thick cover, where he can come right up close to that client closer. He took a chance. He goes into an open grass savanna and says, you know what, let me just take what I can. It got him killed. Impaled, right there, right through his plural space, dead within two days. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been my honor, truly, to share just these few moments with you. You have what you need. What you don't have, you don't need. We consistently want to import things from the outside. What do I need to drive? What do I need to wear? What do I need to do? What book do I need to read in order to be successful? By the way, I wrote a very good book and you should buy it. <laughs> you have what you need. You actually have what you need. Your function as top tier management to channel and percolate down to production teams is to distribute this message. You are now in an empower of the people underneath you. You now need to enable and empower creativity, originality, the gumption to come to work, find, see, seek, see it, take it, kill it, eat it. Have a good day. That's where we are. My honor to be here. Thank you.